Hot Springs Village Inside Out is a closer look at the greatness of Hot Springs Village, Arkansas and the surrounding areas, people, places, experiences. Hot Springs Village is one of the most beautiful places on earth. Join me, Randy Cantrell, and my co-host Dennis Simpson as we engage in weekly conversations to explore Hot Springs Village Inside Out. Today's show is brought to you by Central Arkansas's favorite radio station, KVRE. Find them on the dial at 92.9 FM. Stream them live at kvre.com. Remax of Hot Springs Village. The award-winning Remax of Hot Springs Village is the largest real estate office inside the village with over 30 full-time agents and support staff. Visit them to learn more about this beautiful place to solve your real estate needs. Call them today at 1-800-364-9007. Find them online at explorehsv.com. They are Remax of Hot Springs Village at 1-800-364-9007 or online at explorehsv.com. Ike Eisenhower State Farm. Ike and his award-winning team have been serving the insurance needs of folks all around Hot Springs Village since 1998. Ike has qualified for State Farm's President's Club, Chairman's Circle, and Hot Springs Village Insurance Agent of the Year. Call Ike Eisenhower State Farm today at 501-984-4100. That's 501-984-4100. Find them online at IkeEisenhower.net. Call them today for all your insurance needs because, like a good neighbor, Ike Eisenhower State Farm is there. Here again with repeat offender, Mr. Terry Wiley. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. I'm looking at my picture in the uh, camera here, though, and realize I need a haircut. <laughs> oh, you look good. You look good. I, I don't, well, you, yeah, okay, maybe you need a haircut. I don't need one so bad, that's for sure. <laughs> What is going on at the crazy H the PIX office? Hang on. Have I got, oh, I need to check something here real You're quick. Right. I, am I on there? Oh, there I am. There I am. I there it. I am. Yep. 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 So uh, it, winter, right? I mean, come on. It's, it's just February 1st. How right. many people, I mean, how many people are going to get out for events? Apparently a lot, right? No kidding. And that's, Dennis, that's one of the things I'm proud of. When I first got here, it seems like forever ago, but it's only about six years ago, believe it or not. But uh, wow. And I, I was told when I got here that uh, don't schedule stuff in the winter because nobody's here and nobody goes. Um, we've made a really conscious effort to change that way of thinking and put it out there and change it. And it finds out people do want things to do. Yeah. And uh, not everybody bails uh, Hot Springs Village during the winter to go up uh where it's warmer, you know what I mean? So some of us get stuck here, don't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you look at our on our on our website where we're selling our tickets at hsbticketsales.com, there's over 28 events that we're that we have going on. Uh well, let, me, let me back us up just posted through March, the end of March. Wow, wow. Let me let me back us up for 10 seconds. I was out of town, I was literally snowed out, but somebody tells me this whole uh, Tennessee River was a screaming good time. It was, everybody had a blast at that. They were here for two nights, and uh, that's a Village Concert Association show. They they always do a good job of picking out some quality bands, and, um, you know, they, they was good. They were they were good. So an Alabama tribute band, right? Yep, it was. It was. Man, I'll tell you. So, okay, HSB ticket sales, let's get rolling. And, and by the way, give them their due. The fine folks at the Concert Association, those of you that are new, we're giving you the five mile high here, where it says VCA, that's the Village Concert Association. And strangely yep. enough, all these are sold out, Terry, it looks like, or at least 90% of them, right? They are, they are. We have two basically, uh, we, we have three groups that do season tickets, and we have two really big ones, one being the VCA, and, and then the other one being the POA, the, the series that, that we put on. Uh, mm-hmm. Then we have stuff like a the Lifelong Learning Institute and Hot Springs Entertainment Foundation have a series now. Uh, we just it, there's so many opportunities. Like I say, if if you say there's nothing to do, you're not trying hard to find it. You're not at HSB ticket sales looking around. That's the problem. No you're kidding. not looking around. And, yeah, and that's not even, that's a, this ticket sales doesn't even count our things like the bingo nights and all the dances we have at the community center. 
And yeah. and it, it discounts the entire fact we have a steam room up and going again. We have a sauna up and going again. We have a, a jacuzzi up and going again. And the, the track never went down. The pool, everything's going good there. I mean, all that's up and functional. Yep, knocking on wood, but everything's working right now. <laughs> we had a little minor problem during this uh a couple of weeks ago when you know we had a couple of days of zero degree temperature. We had some pipes bust in the uh indoor pool. Oh, but we man. got that rectified and everything's rolling. I'll tell you what, we're we're just not set up for that kind of weather. There's just no way about it. I mean, it's it's such an outlier. That happens so rarely, <clears throat> it's just nearly unreasonable to build every building in the village for zero degree because we just don't oh yeah that, right? if you'll notice our, our fountain at the west gates uh has been down since that freeze now for 40 years that they've had that fountain it never froze up uh really but you until know, the, this year all the yeah all the guts are five or six foot down in the ground so there's really i mean it just never has happened and but I, again a couple back to back days of zero degrees and a week of of what we had it just put the hurt on some things yeah, yeah, I get it. Well, speaking of warming up, tell me about Mr. Hamilton Loomis. Who is this? Oh, we're really excited about this show. This is uh, one of the best blues gar guitar players in the in the country. He's coming in from Texas. This is kind of a, you know, it, as a POA, we have our uh, season shows or season tickets that we do in May through September. But then we also like to do a lot of one-off shows that mm -hmm. are separate from the season. And this is one of them. Um, and that's actually tonight. I know this isn't getting posted tonight, but uh, oh yeah, sorry, it's, yeah, it's going to be a good time at the Woodlands tonight. He he he's a player, and he can well, sing. He does a little I bit. Tell you what we need to take what we need to take away from this is is that you just need to be a regular attendee of HSV ticket sales and look around because a lot of stuff comes and goes. I like to think I'm relatively plugged in, but man, there's a lot of shows that come and go that I just miss. Yeah, yeah, if you, it's, it's something that you need to have that. Uh, Pin to your uh, internet website, the ticket sale site, so you can just check it out every day because it we update it constantly. So for those that are big fans of Share, this is Miss uh, Lisa McCrowry, right? Yep, yep. Again, she's one of the most outstanding tribute artists around. Uh, she travels again. She travels all over the over the world, not just the country, doing this show. Really? Uh, so yeah, and she has a, one of those residencies in Las Vegas. Yeah. So but there, and, a lot of times when they have the residencies and winter months is when they like travel around. So oh. she'll be here. And we're excited about that. That's next week. Um, it is sold out, but uh, some people um, things come up, you know. And so if you yeah. get on the on our ticket sales website, you can go to that. Uh, click the links where it says uh, read more on mm -hmm. the on the website, and and there's mm -hmm. a ticket exchange site. Where some yep. people realize they bought the tickets a while back, they're going to be out of town and they're putting up to kind of swap it out or set resell it or something like that. So, and I'm not plugging the VCA folks, but obviously if you got on their email list and you could pre-buy tickets, that would be convenient too, because so many of their stuff is sold out, right? Oh, correct. Really, their season tickets generally sell out. It's very rare. Yeah. They they try to sell all their season tickets. The one thing that we do different as a POA, uh, you know, we have that 650 seat venue. I always mm -hmm. cut the season tickets off at 550 mm -hmm. and then start selling shows individually because then there's a lot of people that only want to see two or three of the shows. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we I try to leave that opportunity with like 100 tickets for each show. But on the VCA so shows, they sell them all out. So it's really very rare that you can buy individual shows with the VCA. Wow. You know, what a problem to have, right? Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. They're doing uh, it right, apparently. They are. Altrusa <laughs> has the third annual Valentine's extravaganza, and this benefits the Altrusa um, uh, dinner that they have with the kids. Is that right? Yeah, they are, they're a community organization that, that do a lot of volunteer projects and services throughout the community. So this is just another one of their fundraisers. Everything they do is to, to give back to the community. So it's a great organization, and uh, they do a really good job. And I think they have and, a local and, group, Voices Rising, playing at their event. Yeah, and, and let me back up real quick. We did a show with Altrusa and found out that it was about altruism, about doing good things for other people and helping other people. Yeah. Wonderful program. I suggest if you want to know more about that, go to, to one of our shows and take a look up there. The Hot Springs Concert Band, these people are everywhere all the time. Talk about a bunch of active people. What's going on? <laughs> No kidding. If you look at their website, they're all over the place. But again, they play every quarter here. This is their their yearly winter concert. So uh, 
they always have draw a big crowd and they always draw a lot of people from outside the village as well. You know, and just to prove that there's a lot of romantics in the village, there's always plenty of things to do on Valentine's Day in Hot Springs Village. <laughs> that there is. You can go go to the the Boys and Girls Club of Saline County and and Cedar Mountain Club are doing their benefit dinner at uh, at the Coronado Center. It's and that is Coronado dance. Center, fifty dollars. Excuse me, fifty dollars per person, I guess. Yep, excuse it me. comes with the dinner and the dance, the music, and all all that comes with it. And actually, I hadn't thought about it, but also, I mean, this goes to benefit the Boys and Girls Club here just outside the right. gates, or that, that's where our local affiliate is. Wonderful, yep. wonderful people. And they uh, do a great job. They, I mean, they have that uh, they have that daycare inside the village mm -hmm. that uh, my little oh, rum right, yeah. rum rambunctious kid went to. <laughs> so they do a great job. Uh, I think I think that my my uh, uh, now rambunctious twin grandbabies were just <laughs> idyllic angels until they met your kids, and that's <laughs> when it all went south. I'm pretty yeah, sure. That, I wish I could deny that, but it's probably accurate. <laughs> it's like the deacon's kids and the and the pastor's kids. It, yeah, <laughs> the, they're a bad influence. Bad influence. Tell us about the wines tour, and this always sells out tour. I, I, I know there's people that want tickets to this. Thursday, uh, uh, February the 15th, the wine worldwide, the world tour of wines about California. Tell me more about this. Yeah, it's another program that we do three or four times a year. We do it in conjunction with the Cork and Bottle. Uh, it, it's a program put on that's been very successful. It's something that's been it's been going on here for a long time. Actually, Craig Annan, he used to be the manager of the Coronado Center, uh, when he was here, he kind of he put this program into action. Um, we kind of shut it down during the COVID times, but now that we came back, and uh, Craig has has left uh, the POA as an employee, but he's at the Cork and Bottle, and we've been able to team up and keep it going because it's so popular. So we're, tell me we're more about to... exactly what happens. Well, what do they they have? They have several bottles, and they just take a tour through. I mean, they they discuss the different wineries or what? Yeah, they usually have like a lecture, like a a, a learning thing. Uh, They'll have like five or six different carafts of, of what they're selling. And it's all going to be uh, from that origin or that region that it's labeled as. And again, they do it for, they do stuff all over the place. They've had Switzerland, Australia, Germany. I mean, this one's California. No telling. I don't know if Arkansas has a wine, is <laughs> has a vineyard, but if they do, I'm sure it'll pop up sometimes. Several, several. Yeah, we've got Altus and we've got Weedeker and yeah, yeah. I was going to make note and just throw this out there that it's important that you have a discussion and have a lecture because you don't want to just go in someplace and start drinking, right, Terry? I mean, come on, Terry, you, you, you got to have you got to have a discussion before you get anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we make sure we put some food in their belly before they start drinking. <laughs> Here's your cheese. There you go, uh, Jason Floyd Coleman, raising the curtain series. I don't know anything about this. What so the Life yeah, Learning Institute? Okay, this. Is yeah, this is their first show for their season series. Oh, cool! And uh, uh, this Jason Floyd Coleman, he's uh, he is the grandson of uh, let me see, it's a really Floyd famous Kramer. player. I think uh, Floyd Kramer, who yeah. was inducted to the Country Music Hall of Fame. So uh, he's a real, he's just really talented at what he does. Uh, he's basically a piano and singer, and he does does a little bit of everything. Well, you know, Floyd Kramer did the last waltz. Dun, dun, yeah, dun, there you go. Dun, that's dun, what dun, I was thinking. Dun, 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 I couldn't dun, place dun. it, yeah. but that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that ought to be interesting. I didn't know this was the first uh, LLI. That, that's going to be great. And the Entertainment Institute. Uh, tell me yeah. about movie night. This is at the Woodlands. Where are we going to do this? It is. It's at the Woodlands. We had our first one actually in January. Uh, and it, it was a it was a really big success. We had almost 200 people show up to the movie theater, to the Woodlands. Really? We had it set up like a movie theater, had the bar open, and it's really, I mean, it is great. I mean, I, I went to a movie over Christmas break in town, and there's 20 people in the theater. So for us to have around 200, I, I think that's a big success. Uh, and it's something we got a music license or a movie license now to add to really our cool. uh, liquor license and our music license and so many kind of licenses we have in this department. Now we have a movie license. So we have Top Gun Maverick playing uh, February 27th. Tickets are only $5. I mean, wow. it's well worth it. Yeah. Yeah. And, awesome. and for what it's worth, you talked about going to, to uh, Hot Springs to see a movie. Yeah. And it wasn't much bigger than the screen I've got in my house that's 110 inches. The, the <laughs> little movie right. theaters downtown are just, you know, kind of dinky. And we've got a big honking one here in the village. That's awesome. 
Yeah, it really worked out. We're excited about it. We've had uh, a lot of positive feedback. Well, great. And five bucks to see a, a top run movie. That's cool. Yeah, That's very cool. Can't beat it. And what, what was it? You Let's see the music license, the liquor license, the movie license. In the words of the famous comedian Gallagher, everywhere you leak, the world has a bucket. No so, kidding. No kidding. That is for sure. So the Motown Sound Review, this looks interesting. What's going on here? Now, this is another thing where, uh, as a POA, we teamed up uh, at the Coronado Center a couple of years ago. If you remember, we decided there's a, there's a lot of talent in the area. If you go to Ben, yeah. Bryant, Hot Springs, and kind of stuff. So trying to have some more local bands. Uh, it, while, while we mostly have national touring acts at the Woodlands, the mm -hmm. Coronado Center is a great venue now for us to really have a 240, 300-seat venue for local acts. And this is part of us teaming up with one of those hot springs groups that do a lot of productions at the vapors and all around really? hot springs. So we're excited about that. And it's going to be a dinner and a movie or a dinner and a concert, excuse me. Oh, cool. Well, and you know, we talked about this a few months back. Heck it could have been a year back now these days, but the, you talk about the local talent. We always have, you know, Branson people come in, uh, mm -hmm. Las Vegas people come in in the winter, that kind of thing. But to have our own talent, that's uh, just really awesome. It is. And I'm glad that we have two venues that, that can, you know, there's always a, there's a right fit for each group. So it's, it's really working out a lot. And I, I hate to say this, I'll make my confession, but I'm kind of an audio snob and the yep. sound at the Coronado is great. Now, I don't mean it's good. I mean, it's great. And I'm well, kind of picky, you, thank but you, thank they you. really did a great job there. Good deal. We appreciate that. And our guys do a good job running the equipment. So. Yeah, and you, well, Dakota running the equipment, they they really, they're on the ball. Uh, I've sure. heard more than one artist comment how good the sound guys are. Hits and grins. Oh, you got that Bill Wythe guy coming back. His comment the last yep. time I interviewed him was, I probably shouldn't write so many songs about drinking, but I'm not going <laughs> to stop. But but I'm not yeah. going to stop. So, you know, and and one of his all-time, my all-time favorites that he has, he was here with Brent Barnes, uh, but one of my all-time favorites is, I ain't drinking alone because the dog is home. See, yes. that kind of quality <laughs> entertainment, Terry, you don't get well, just you, everywhere. You Tell us I wish I could claim that I booked this one, but this is the second show again from the from the LLI and Hot Springs Entertainment Foundation in their series. They have a lot of yeah. fun on stage. They really do. These are great guys. Uh, Bill, yeah. Bill was the... Uh, is in the Broadcasters Hall of Fame. He was a DJ of the year for a country DJ of the year. Uh, and who has he got with him in this? Who I think it is, Victoria Verner or Steve Dean? I don't, that don't ring names, but I, Bill has been a show, a guest a couple of times here with me. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful guy. And you are dragging the muses in from Hot Springs. This is a big deal. It is. They're all, they, again, they, we're lucky to have them here. They do like three shows a year here. And um, it, it brings a different kind of performance. If you're like into the opera and that, and that kind of things, they really bring that here. And, uh, uh, that's the fancy stuff that I never would have thought about booking, <laughs> but we're lucky that uh, we're able to team with them, team up with them, and they do a lot of great shows. So uh, if let you're me, into me, opera it, and the Celtic, it's a Celtic show that's in March that they do annually. So it'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to just let you know, people, that they don't do any Skinnerd. I'm just saying that, you know, I, don't think I mean, they're nice <laughs> enough people, but there's no Skinnerd at all. It's all Celtic, you know. So yeah, there's that's that. Right. <laughs> uh, Bill, the, uh, the Washington Speaker Series, Bill Steele. Oh, my yep. God, a spelunker or a caber guy, as we call him. Yeah, yeah I uh, Tell like me more a, about this. If you want to see like an episode of Expedition Unknown, but live, and hear someone that can talk about like that, uh, this is a show to go to. Uh, it's the Speaker Series. This is their first show of their spring season. It's at the Pont Center. Uh, and like I say, he's a cave explorer, and they just do a presentation um about all his experiences and travels and discoveries and things like that the speaker series always it's always educational and great it's just always a fun time yeah we had if you like uh, anything on history channel or science channel or politics or anything it, there's always a speaker that'll that comes around that talks about it who's had well, experience had, in it and been around yeah They've had some world-class presenters, too. And and obviously, the next one over is you can buy the season ticket. You can just buy the ticket for Bill Steele. This is 15 bucks, But the uh, the uh, whole speaker series is, is $50. Uh, now, what is the deal? I'm just curious, and I see this is sold out again. What is the deal with this village and Brian Seltzer? Because they are nuts about this guy. Now, I know this is a tribute band, but, man, people just love these guys. 
Yeah, well, oh, they're an outstanding band. Uh, I actually, a few months ago, if, if anybody watches that, uh, Daryl Hall from Hall and Oates. Yeah, from Daryl's house. Yeah. Yeah, this band was backing him on that show uh, at one on one episode. So really? that kind of tells you the talent level they have. There are some original members from the Stray Cats in this band. And uh, again, it's going to, they have the whole thing from the dancers to all the, all the instruments. It's going to be, it's going to be a big show. Man, I, I can see why. Once again, you can go to the HSB concerts and see if you can get a ticket, but they are sold out. I'm seeing, and I don't want to hop ahead here, but the anglers, uh, the anglers annual fishing seminar, where's that at? We, we do that at the Coronado Center. Again, we team up uh, with our lakes department and the mm -hmm. Anglers Club. And uh, there's a lot of interest in our lakes. You know, we have a lot of lakes and a lot of different kind of fish. And each lake has something a little bit different. So they they really give a good education on, on how to catch the fish here, what the laws are, what the policies and procedures are, uh, keep you out of trouble, but also teach you how to catch what we have in the lakes. So it's a really cool program. And I if the weather walk that. race, they go out on Coronado after the uh, seminar, really, and, uh, and go fishing together and kind of, kind of put the uh, put the seminar in action. Man, I'd like to. I may have to sign up for that. That sounds wonderful, and that's on Saturday, March sixteenth, eight thirty in the morning. Uh, Madame has been murdered. The tea will be late. Who's that presented by? Yep. That is the Hot Springs Village Players. Uh, again, they're a, they're a constant here. They are they're a staple of the community. I think they they've had presentations at the Woodlands Auditorium since the Woodlands was built. Mm -hmm. So uh, they yeah, have and, definitely and great been around, and they always it's a it's a lot of local folks, and uh, they do great job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then now we're coming to the, uh, I know a little bit about this. I just got through doing a show on this, but the fine folks at the hot okay. Springs village community foundation are doing a matching grant. I don't know if you know, that's what this is for, but they actually do this to raise funds because if we raise $40,000, then the community foundation of Arkansas gives us another $40,000 to keep our fund going. And, right. uh, this is the diamonds and they they do a, what a three o'clock show on the 26th, right? Yes. They're doing two different shows. They're doing a matinee and a, and a evening show, and they're going to be different. So if you really like the Diamonds and want to see two different shows, you can do that. Or, you know, you can just pick which one you want. And Melinda's is ho hosting a pre-show dinner for the evening show. But the so, Community Foundation, so again, they're a great organization. And, uh, you know, they do this annually every March. Yeah. So so what I'm saying is I could show up about 3 o'clock, get my bandstand boogie on, Wait till mm -hmm. about five and have dinner with Melinda's. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think there's going to be the potato bar I hear tell. And then uh, right behind that, then we do the Let's Brock Broadway with the, the the same group, just doing a completely different concert, right? You get all the diamonds you want to have right there. <laughs> <laughs> Tennis free for all. Tell me about this, buddy. Yeah, it's at the end of March. We're obviously we're heading to the spring season when we run this. It's a it's a program that's put on by our, uh, our head tennis professional uh, Bob Wagstaff, where he gives uh, free lessons for a week. Uh, you know, it's for really? anybody beginners. Uh, if you have played, if you haven't played, if you're trying to get back into it, it's just a way to get you back out there and see if it's something you might be interested in as a sport that you can play and, and you know join as our tennis club. But it's a it's a great program. It's hey, you can't beat free lessons in tennis, and they. Even if you don't have a racket, we'll give you one. You don't even have to. You don't have to have anything. We'll we'll have it all supplied for you. So you could say it's it's kind of a racket. Well, I tell you what. <laughs> tough crowd. Tough Are you going to cut that crowd. out? No, I'm not going to cut that out. Are you <laughs> kidding? Like, <laughs> that's the only time this. That's the only time this week I'm going to be funny. Hello, uh, duh. It was good. Tell, I was just, tell I, me about I, the summer good. tour. <laughs> Oh, that's our POA summer tour. That, that, that That's a show that, that runs from May through September, one show a month. I think that we do the third Thursday of every month. And this is our POA season that I was talking about earlier. Yeah. Uh, and again, we are right at about 530 season tickets sold. So we, honestly, we only have about 20 more season tickets to sell before I'm cutting it off and just selling individual shows. And, and, and individual can you shows on that, we have a... Uh, we start off in May with the Led Zeppelin celebration. Oh man! In June uh, is one of the best Leonard Skinner bands out of Atlanta, Georgia. Really? Uh, in July we have a cool '80s party band, the Spasmatics. In August we have the Who Invasion out of New York City, 
And then in September, um, we had this show about five or six years or four or five years ago, Art Rages. It's an incredible, it's a credible production. It's one of the favorite things that I've ever seen here. And it's, I can't wait for it again. Whoa, 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 whoa. So a friend of mine in the IT world that I've worked with for 35 years, she's a wonderful uh -huh. lady, Susan Smith, works in Dallas. And okay. guess who just played at their, well, I think she said it was a 40th year uh, anniversary for this company. The mm -hmm. Spasmatics just played there, and she oh, yeah. was raving about how great they were. <laughs> they were time. this band band tore down the house. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I, by the way, my next door neighbor across the street uh, got to see the ELO concert. Was that last year or year before? It was two years ago, but that yeah. probably that's in my top five that we booked. I, that was amazing. He said that he said that was the most amazing knockoff, you know, the <laughs> tribute. He said, tribute my bud. He said, Oh my lord, what a concert. And I, you know, I, I was doing the morning after there was a concert, really? Oh man, yeah. <laughs> I missed it. And like Jeff Lynn was really on stage. You didn't like that, right? <laughs> but tell I me about do, Muriel Anderson. What what is this? Yeah, we're lucky to have her. She's actually visiting uh, some uh some friends of hers that live here. And she really? is one of the best guitar players around. You can click on, there's a link where you can kind of hear her play if you go on our website. Uh, but really? she's playing at the Coronado Center, and that's going to be during Eclipse weekend. So that's that's going to be hectic anyway. So we're going to have a lot mm -hmm. of people in the end. So we're really hoping to have a big turnout at the Coronado Center for her. But uh, uh, she's doing a presentation that has uh, like images and music together is kind of what <laughs> she's playing. And we're really excited about it. She's, she's really talented. And again, She's all over the internet. She's won a lot of prestigious awards, played all over all the fancy places. So you need to check it out. One of these visual artists, as they say, she does the music yeah. and the the right. The magic of Rick Thomas. I, I'm just curious. I have unfortunately not been able to be at one of these uh, uh, illusionist or magician shows mm -hmm. yet. Are those usually well attended in the village? Oh, they are. They are. They, the two that we've had have also have both sold out. And this guy's amazing. I mean, again, he's a guy who had a residency in Las Vegas at Caesars Palace for a long time. Really? Uh, uh, just a few weeks ago, he got back from a residency at the Sydney Opera House in Australia, I believe. So, but he's based out of Branson. He has his own theater there. And really? he is incredible. I and mean, he's acknowledged around the world as one of the best, the, as one of the best that there is. And, uh, it's going to be crazy. And here's the only thing I can tell you. I, I don't, I still don't know how he does it, but uh, all I know is he has a, he's on the stage. He has, he has somebody with him. He throws his sheet up. And next thing you know, there's a real live helicopter sitting on our woodland stage. So that's the kind Are of cool you stuff. you kidding? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit, it's a little bit, bit scary if you ask me, but <laughs> <laughs> he pulls it off. So it's good stuff. What's, what's, what's your, uh, what's your, uh, your, uh, concert requirements? Well, you have to have room for a helicopter on stage. Do what? Yeah, well, that's, that's part <laughs> the of stage it. has to be big enough for a helicopter, right? It's yeah, no kidding. It's a great show. And we're doing that two nights, the, uh, the Thursday and Friday of that eclipse weekend. I'm hoping oh, wow. I'm, and I'm thinking, I'm pretty sure that we're going to have a lot more people in the village than, than normal. A lot uh, of people yeah. have family, friends, and guests from all over the place staying with them. So I think it's really cool that we can put up uh, a performance of this uh, quality to let people visiting see see the cool stuff we have at Woodlands. Well, I'll tell you what, our Airbnbs booked up in November. Yeah. For April, I mean, just completely packed for April. And and I don't you know I don't mean to be a naysayer, I really don't. But you know, Terry, in Arkansas. In April, it can be cloudy. It could be. It could be. <laughs> it could be cloudy. Not not so many happy people, if you know what I mean. I got a little sneak peek at them. I don't know how they do it. Actually, I think it's trickery and not real, but there's a monthly forecast that I could look at. So I, I oh, got really? a sneak peek at it. Now, look, they can't get the weather right tonight, but... But uh, but there's but there's they, a room that has five monkeys in it and they're throwing darts at a billboard yeah. seeing if they can predict the weather next month, right? They're pulling out an 1876 farmer's almanac. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as always, what do we love in the village? We love free. Tell me about yep. free, my brother. Oh my gosh. To be a member of this fitness center, it's as easy as coming down here and seeing if your insurance uh program 
has a reimbursement program that'll that'll take care of your membership for you. It costs nothing out of your pocket. It's just part of part of your insurance. If you we have between two thousand to twenty three hundred uh, members of this center, and I would say seventy five percent of them are here for free on a membership on an insurance membership program. And, and again, how can it costs, I help it you? Costs a, it costs a person nothing. They come and, in here, but, uh, we fill out the paperwork. Now you have a membership. Every time you show up, we fill out we fill out a piece of paper, send it in, and then we get paid three dollars and seventy five cents for you to come in here and visit. So there's a couple things that show one, up. It costs you nothing, but you have when you sign up, you have to show up for it for us to be able to get paid and be able to keep the facility as nice as it is because it really I, is I a truly really great facility. It really is. And I got to make note, Terry. I mean, the, the whole scenario is just improbable. You know, why would they pay for free? Because they want you to show up, but you don't get a dime unless they do show up. Is that right? That is correct. We don't get a dime. You can come and sign up. And again, that's a misconception. People sign up and think, okay, I did my part. They get their membership. I think the membership is $450, $470. I'm I can't, I'm not looking at it right now, but that's mm -hmm. not how it works. If you're on the insurance program, we only get paid if you show up a certain amount of uh, a small amount per visit, but small amounts add up. And 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 I do want to thank everybody, by the way, because our numbers increased dramatically last year. So really? uh, that really helped us out. So, so let me, and once again, I, for the five mile high view, I'm trying to make sure this is extremely clear to people. I come sign up for free. If I've got a qualifying uh, 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 insurance program, which what would you say, Terry, 60, 70, 80% of them qualify most times? Yes, for sure. No doubt. No doubt. Okay. Every insurance so I, company wants to have a program like that because they would much rather pay, you know, $3 and 75 cents every time you go to the gym then you're not being healthy and then having medical bills that they're paying, you know, at the wazoo. So it's, it Tens really benefits so most insurance companies. And it's not only a Medicaid or Medicare thing. That's another misconception. Uh, most insurances at, at all age levels, a lot of them have it. Really? So, and, but, and then, so I'm signed up, mm -hmm. I walk in the door, I walk around the track five times. You still get 375 or the POA still gets 375. We do. We do. We do. And again, there's that again, I want to stress we were so successful last year, uh, even though we had those problems in the hot room, because again, the sure, facility yeah. was old. That that's an old facility that was that has outdated equipment. Uh, the reason we're able to spend eighty thousand dollars to repair that and get it all fixed is because the uh, attendance increased so significantly. So we mm -hmm. really could justify it. Uh, wow. This was actually the first year, put a little brag on us where it typically just by the nature of our business model with depending so much on insurance, the fitness center typically loses around between 200 and $250,000 a year. Uh, 2023 was the first year we actually made $6,000. So we had over a $200,000 turnaround just based on really people really coming, taking advantage of that insurance. Uh, we try to change the culture around here a little bit. And and that increase in revenue helped us fix that hot room. So really, the reason that we didn't knock it down is because we had we were able to generate enough revenue to help fix it and repair it. W without an eighty thousand dollar repair, you would have been slaying it. There's no, <laughs> I mean, either that or keep on paying five thousand dollars a month just to keep it running. You know. Oh man! Oh yeah, I know yeah, so that, that it's, equipment it's is so. Really, I'm really proud of all our members. They've really teamed up and done a good job. Well, and I want to make note again, one more time, the, the POA gets 375 to offset the expense of running the place just because I show up, right? Yeah, that's it. That is it. Uh, on a on a cold winter's day, to use the <laughs> phrase from a word, from a song before, on a cold winter's day, you might may or may not see Dennis come into the to the facility, <laughs> walk around the track 10 or 15 times, go over to the sauna to the uh, to the hot tub room sit in the hot tub room in a chair in the sunshine reading my book and making 375 for the POA on my butt as it were there you go well it doesn't sound like a ton of money but when you put 500 people in here a day throughout the day you can see that's real money man that's incredible terry i appreciate the job you do honestly it's yeah, always great you. visiting with you we're going to see you again soon right oh i'm looking forward to it thanks terry Maybe talk to see you soon you buddy. concert tonight yes talk to you later 
Thanks for watching and listening to Hot Springs Village Inside Out, a weekly podcast starring Hot Springs Village, Arkansas. Visit the website at hotspringsvillageinsideout.com.